everyone and welcome to this Wednesday of Holy Week as we gather together in Jesus name to study his words and have this time of daily devotions. As we do so we find ourselves in John chapter 13 a reading from verse 21 and this is the moment where Jesus predicts his betrayal and all the disciples want to know who's going to be involved in this betrayal. So let's find out what's happened, shall we? So it's John chapter 13 and verse 21. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So, after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. There we have it. There's John's common reference to the light and the darkness. Uh, the light of the world, of course, being Jesus. And Judas leaves the presence of the light of the world, and he goes out into the night, represented by the darkness. Darkness can come in many shapes and forms, of course, uh, and I guess one of the ways that it manifests itself to us at the moment is in terms of disappointment. We, we all know what it's like to be disappointed in people, uh, to be disappointed by our circumstances. After the year or so that we've had in our household, uh, I guess, um, well not very often actually, we've been disappointed with people. Uh, there have been people who've really stepped up to the plate and surpassed our expectations. There have been people who have behaved in exactly the way that we'd have expected them to. And there have been some that we perhaps expected more of, um, but actually we found ourselves a little disappointed. As I say, very rare for that to happen. And then, of course, there's circumstances. We all know what that's like at the moment, don't we? Happen the disappointment of cancellations and postponements, things that we've been looking forward to that aren't any longer going to happen. Uh, we've got a fair few of those, and if you're anything like us, you're uh, negotiating with various people about uh, refunds or um, deferments or postponements, having deposits carried over, all that kind of thing. Uh, so a fair bit of disappointment uh, around at the moment. In some ways, uh, and on one level you could say that as Jesus gathered with these people for this meal, he's about to be disappointed by every one of them. When you think about Judas Iscariot, it, the word disappointment doesn't even seem to uh, start to cut it, does it really? It betrays him so terribly. Then there's Peter who is asking the beloved disciple uh, to ask Jesus what he's talking about. Uh, well, he'll prove to be uh, a major disappointment over the next couple of days. But even the beloved disciple is amongst the rank and file of disciples, uh, and you could say on one level uh, that the Lord disappoints him. I'll say on one level, because it, it's hard to know how this works, isn't it, really, with Jesus being fully God, uh, fully human. Fully human, he'd say, well, he was disappointed in the people that he thought uh, would step up to the plate better than they did. But there's other words that Jesus uses in this passage which tells us that he's not really going to be disappointed because he seems to be 
in control of the situation. He, he doesn't really seem to be uh, the victim. For example, uh, this is how he's in control. Uh, he knows that he's got to be betrayed. Uh, he knows precisely who is going to betray him. He actually gives him the piece of bread as the signal uh, to get on with it. And then right to the end where he talks about uh, the fact that this is uh, the time now, the scum, and he's going to be glorified in the Father, and the Father's going to be glorified in him. Uh, in John, glorification is always to do with the cross. Exaltation and being lifted up is always to do with the cross. So to some extent, fully human, yes, he could be disappointed, but fully God, uh, he knew exactly what was going on, and he knew exactly what was going to happen, and he does seem to be uh, in control of events. Ever since I was a young man, I've remembered a sentence by uh, the spiritual writer Andrew Murray, uh, who had this very catchy phrase, and you know I like catchy phrases, and uh, this catchy phrase says, Turn disappointment into his appointment. Turn disappointment into his appointment. As I say, it wouldn't even begin to scratch the surface to describe uh, the cross as a disappointment for Jesus. But in many ways, the cross wasn't a disappointment anyway, it was his appointment. And very often when Jesus spoke about the cross, he, he spoke about the appointed hour. Very often we have to bear disappointments, and as I say, not least at this current time. But even this crisis that we're going through, the disappointments that we face, I, I wonder perhaps whether we could actually look at those not so much as disappointments, but as his appointments. And if in any way at all, he has appointed us, our place, our lot, at this particular time. I wonder what you think he's appointed you to do. I wonder what you think he's appointed you to be. What sense is your perhaps empty diary at the moment, that perhaps once was full of appointments. And in what sense that empty diary has now become his appointment for your life? And in what way are you going to fill those entries? So let us pray. Father God, we live in a disappointing time. And many of us have experienced disappointments of things that we were looking forward to the excitement and the anticipation have all been swept away. But Father, help us not to languish in disappointment, as human as we are, and as natural as it is. But help us to see these things as his appointment, as your appointment for us this particular time in our lives, in whatever our circumstances may be. Help us to know by your grace what it is you've appointed for us, what it are you calling us to do, and who are you calling us to be. And this prayer we ask, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, look forward to seeing you this time next week. <laughs>